This is a photograph of the legendary hydrogen project called Pruitt-Igoe. Pruitt-Igoe was built in the 50s in North St. Louis. It was made up of 33 buildings that were 11 stories. Pruitt-Igoe is considered one of the worst examples of public housing. Plagued with many issues, Pruitt-Igoe finally met its end in the 70s when all 33 buildings were imploded, leaving a massive empty lot. And over time, this empty lot has transformed itself into a 33-acre urban forest. And it was this forest that inspired me to go in and take photographs. Now, as an artist, I use my art to think and contemplate about subjects and ideas. And while I was photographing Pruitt-Igoe, I started to think to myself, Pruitt-Igoe was an unnatural structure that was housing community, and it didn't work out. But now Pruitt-Igoe was nature, so what community could naturally exist there? And for me, that community were bees. And that's where the Pruitt-Igoe Bee Sanctuary Project started. I created this site-specific installation of beehives that references the architect Yamasaki's design. <laughs> so why do bees need a sanctuary? All over the world, bees are vanishing from colony collapse disorder. Now this is a huge issue because bees pollinate the majority of our food and we actually rely on them for our survival. In addition, St. Louis population also fall, fell. And I thought, whoa, bees and St. Louisans are in the same boat. <laughs> so as an artist, I thought to myself, why don't we start a partnership? To explore this partnership, I received an Art Matters grant to do research in the southern part of Spain to document a cave drawing called the Man of Bike Corp. The Man of Bike Corp is an 8,000-year-old cave drawing and is the first record of humans interacting with bees. Now, what was really fascinating is when I went there to look at the drawings, you see all the other drawings that surrounded the Man of Bike Corp. You had animals of the hunt, tools of the hunt, domesticated animals. So I asked myself, what were we thinking 8,000 years ago that was so important to draw it up on the wall? And I came up with survival. And beekeeping was very much part of that survival. The next question I had to ask myself is, can bees be in public space? This is an article uh, from St. Louis where an older person made uh, a woman remove her one beehive from a community garden. So there's actually fear of bees in public space. I started to analyze parks in St. Louis, and since St. Louis has a strong French influence, it naturally led me to the Luxembourg Gardens in Paris, France. And in this garden, this public park, is the oldest beekeeping school in the world. The school has over a million bees, and what was really nice to see, what was really fascinating, is that bees and humans were coexisting in public space. No one was getting stung. Parisians were drinking wine, eating cheese, and the bees were doing their thing, <laughs> which is pollinating the garden and the orchard. I also found out that at the end of the season, they have a huge harvest. Being inspired by this, by the Luxembourg Gardens, I came back and I started to come up with a proposal. The proposal is to transform the Pruitt-Igo lot into a public space that cultivates community through urban agriculture and beekeeping. Not having access to the site, I decided to take the proposal off the page and initiate it in the Old North community. 
where we transform this vacant lot into this outside classroom. And in this outside classroom, we've been teaching workshops in beekeeping, urban agriculture, and the culinary arts. And at the end of our harvest, we started canning our honey and pickling our produce to help support our workshops. Now, it became very obvious that the need to have access to fresh, affordable foods was bigger than our vacant lot and that we needed to expand our program. So once again, inspired by bees, I started analyzing the hive and how it functions and how it's structured. And why couldn't we take this program and apply it to a vacant building? So we're now in the works with the Old North Restoration Group, the Kranzberg Art Foundation, and our tour is designed to transform this defunct grocery store into a food incubator that will address food rights in North St. Louis. I've learned a lot working with bees. I've learned that we are actually very similar and we have the same interests. I've learned that bees can coexist with humans in public space. But the most important thing I've learned is that when you develop a partnership with bees, you actually make a better environment. A better environment for the bees is a better environment for humans. And through that partnership, we were able to transform our future. The Pruitt Igo history books is still open, and if we work together, we can transform one of the worst examples of public housing into a leading example of renewal. And I thank you. <laughs>